Southern Manufacturing 2025. We're here at Farmer International Exhibition Center, Terry. Yes. On the Whole House Machine Tool stand. It's a big stand. You've only got one thing, though. You're showing off um, a fascinating piece of equipment. What yes. are you showing off today? So this is one of our, we've had some real success with this. This is a five axis, full five axis, multitasking machining center from Brother, the Brother Speedio M300 XD1. But you show the camera the part that you guys are making today. Yeah, so this is an example part. It's, it's, it's turning and milling in one setup, showing off the machine. So integrated in, in, in one clamping, we have turning, we have milling, we have five axis. We have 28 tools as standard. We have tool measurement. Um, and it's a really productive solution is what it is. Yeah, and um, if you look inside the side of the machine, the size of the spindle on that, that, that bottom C-axis, the turning spindle, yeah. absolutely huge. So this is capable of turning, milling, like you said, completely multi-axis. Um, yeah. And what, what is something you think people should know about for other machines like this? This is obviously a really high spec one, so it's impressive yes. by itself. But the yeah. standard kind of Brother VMCs as well. What should people know about the Brother yeah. range? Well, it's, it's Japanese production technology. It's designed to run 24 seven, but it's actually really cost effective. So for, for, for batch machining, if you want to get more done in less time, it's something to really look at. And we've had a, a lot of success with this model in particular and the smaller version of it for integrating five axis components and turning into one setup. Yeah, it's absolutely. Compact. And you get from, from, from that machine, you get this, this part basically off in one hit. Off in um, one hit, yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of benefits to that as well, aren't there? Absolutely, yeah. You know, you take the lathe out of the equation. Um, everything's a bit more accurate because it's all together. Mm. Um, yeah. It's productive. And um, what's amazing is on aluminium, on such a small diameter as well, you get a really nice finish. So you've got obviously get decent RPM that can get up the, to the cutting speeds as well that you need to. Yeah, so it's 1500 RPM on this one, and on the smaller machine, it's 2000 RPM on the turning. And then we're usually supplying 16,000 RPM spindles on the milling side. Fanuc robot, very yes. well known, but what yeah. it's integrated with is an off the shelf solution available as well, isn't it? Yes, so this is the Tesmaxan Q box system. So it's draw based, it's modular, it's plug and play. You can see the drawers it's, coming in, so it's literally running live. You're running these all off yes. yesterday and today. Yeah, so we're billets in, we're components out, we're draw based. The operator gives the robot a full drawer of components. The array of parts can be whatever they need to be, square billets, round billets, different sizes. The robot then goes away and tends the machine using that drawer. It can give the drawer back to the operator and then start working from another draw. So the capacity that you get from it, it's actually quite a lot of hours from a from a small footprint. You look at the, the billet density in there is huge. Yes. Now, before we go more into the details of how the Q-Box works, why would you automate a machine like this? Well, I think what the machine itself gives you is something fast, compact, reliable, that can make parts quickly. And then why would you not automate it? Yeah. You yeah. know, do, do what you're doing productively for more hours. And there's the no automation. point in reducing the cycle time and changeovers in this from three ops, let's say, to one op, and yeah. from, I don't know, an hour, because it's been sat waiting in a box, waiting for someone to load into another machine, down to 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. If you've got it waiting five minutes for someone else to go and load a new one in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what you've got on the other side is trays of complete components. Absolutely. You know, ready for, ready for, for, for next operations, measurement, whatever, whatever you need to do. And I guess that yeah. you probably can't put hard numbers on exactly what the return on investment this would be for a specific customer. Yeah. But the, from a business point of view, why would you need? Why would you buy these these machines in tandem? Yeah. From a machine point of view, it's more cost effective than people think. You know, it's like like we said before, it's it's Japanese production technology, but they don't cost the earth. When you look at cost per part and what you can get from a multitasking solution. Um, it, it really does add up well. Absolutely, brilliant. So thank you very much, Terry. We're gonna go over and have a quick talk to Dan uh, Hayes as well. Dan. Hello. Hello, thank Hi. you. So you've been running this machine pretty much the past two days. Yes, yes. Um, let's go have, can we have a quick look at the drawers? I know yeah, there's yeah. a lot of customers around looking on the White House. Oh, Dan. Sorry please? guys. Um, could you tell me a little bit about how these, these drawers work, and how customers will load up parts, and how they'd see it running in their shop day to day? Yeah, so basically the trays are configurable. So at the moment we've just got a, uh, a laser acrylic template uh, based off of DXF. And then we, we could have these, at the moment we're using round billets. So we've done a, an array of components as an incremental pitch and we've just uh, staggered them out equally. So then it's just nice and easy for clearances of the robot, but effectively it will pick it from front to back, working from left to right. It will obviously work out its quickest route uh, of uh, pick up and place. And yeah, we're loading into a, an automated uh, pneumatic voice. Yeah, and, so, and when you say configurable, I'm just trying to spell it out, but it means that you've got two, two drawers here, 
that have got round billets, and down here you've got some some completely yeah. different types of parts. Yeah, so you can do. Uh, these straight we, we've gone with a rectangular on here to effectively uh, nominate a corner. So we'd have a round billet, whether it be an inch, two inch, three inch, or whatever. Uh, we would push into the nominated corner, and then that's where we would tell the points. So that would be part one, two, three, and four. So. Although it's a simplistic template, it gives you more versatility with what components you're putting there because you're just pushing to the corners. And then the tray system is based off, uh, you're in the loading bay, so once you, I'm not going to put my hand in it, but once you then break the signal, you're in the loading area as such. So you load the tray up, you push it into the robot area. And when it's in the robot area, you nominate that it's the robot's now uh, running. And it will then work out, I oh, want this tray, this tray, etc., And it will work, it will work the way, or, work its way down from tray to tray. And once it's finished the tray, it pushes it back into this area. Do you have to do a lot? I mean, how, how, how does the programming work for a changeover for a brand new grid plate? Um, it's it's fairly simplistic. It's uh, obviously an additional robot and the, it's been, the software does it for you effectively. So you've got uh, underneath this running uh, control at the moment, you've got a load sequence. So that could be uh, load a single machine, load two machines or, or whatever, or load and then I do a wash off um, uh, system and then place, you can configure those bits and they're just uh, kind of just a, a simplified app. You go point by point and then task by task. And then when we were going over the trays, it's on the placement, etc. So you would then, you would nominate the DXF suited to the code component. So that could be a casting of, of some sort of shape. Um, and then the, the DXF has the nominated origin, the X and your Y plane, and that creates the flatness. Um, and then that, that that determines the positions and the pick position. So once it's taught and in place, you don't you don't have to uh, keep reteaching the robot. It's you load the, uh, the the template to the datum, and then that's it. Away you go. You just that's it. Load the right program, run it through, and then the, and then the robot then tells the machine to select the correct running uh, program, and then that's it. Just loading and loading phones. User experience is a really important point when you're yes, when you're looking yeah. at off-the-shelf automation yeah. system. We manipulate the robot so it's up out the way past its home position and it allows us to have full access to the machine, to cater for the machine, to do wash down, etc., do the setups. Um, this is literally just to stop people from breaking the beam sensor. And that sensor, yeah, can configure it to an area. We have customers, they put the garage flooring down and nominate, say, a red area and an, uh, an amber area. So. Amber, where, say where uh, myself and you are standing, this will be a, a, a slow down um, machining method. And then when you go into the red, it stops and puts itself into a safety sim. Absolutely. Uh, area. So, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's automation built for the shop floor, high spec machinery, uh, really compact automation, all supplied in the UK and Ireland by White House Machine Tools.